Hey guys, so <laughs> another week's flown by. <clears throat> Excuse me. It just disappears, doesn't it? Time. Um, and a way back in the midst of time when we were beginning to come together every Wednesday night with our <laughs> desire to ensure that we were no longer threatened by feeling fear or anxiety about the COVID thing. Uh, back in those dim distant days now, Lothar was a guest and he used the term, I beg to differ. And since then, of course, we've found lots of people who are begging to differ about lots of the uh, mainstream, let's use the word science, a lot, of, a lot of the people we've had on here are definitely begging to differ about all sorts of things. Uh, and even just last week with Belinda Fetke begging to differ about the way the world is, is dealing with um, diabetes and the terrible situation that her and her husband ran into. Um, so here we have uh, all this time on, uh, things really haven't changed that much. That just that we're having this second bout of what looks like a flu. People die from it, of course they do, but it seems to be following a pattern that was predicted a way back towards the early days of our conversations. So I'm absolutely delighted that Lothar has agreed to come back on and if you like give us an update on where he's at, what's been happening in Germany particularly, although, although he is a global figure in what he does. So without any further ado guys, let's welcome back uh, to mm -hmm. us uh, the wonderful Lothar and I say, Lothar, welcome and thanks for coming back to us. So also thanks for inviting me again. Thanks, hi, Jack. <laughs> so Lothar, um, when, I, when, when we brought you on the last time, I suppose I was expecting to get a little bit of a background on the wonderful work you and Klaus do in Stuttgart to find out what you're doing to get a little bit of an insight in how you might use your awareness to tackle strengthening ourselves against COVID, should it ever come to our door. But then we didn't get that. We got this passion you had for begging to differ. So I'm assuming you still have it. So what's been happening in those six months or so since we last talked? Thousands, I would say thousands of things. Um, <clears throat> I think, let me maybe explain the whole situation in Germany at the moment. <clears throat> there is, um, we are part of a big movement in, in, in Germany. And uh, maybe you have seen on TV uh, in Berlin in, in August, we have been two times demonstrating in Berlin with, I don't know, a few hundred thousand people. Of course, they said we were only, I don't know, 50,000 or something. But believe me, it was quite more, quite more than, than the, the, the news always said. <laughs> So, so in, in August, a lot of things happen because more and more people, um, they are, how can I say, they're not happy, you know, how the government is, is handling the whole situation. So more and more people are going on the street and um, we made a big two, two demonstrations in, in, in Berlin. And, and meanwhile, I would say in around, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 cities, uh, every weekend, every Saturday, every Sunday, and partly even every day, uh, people are going on the street just to show the, the government, we are not happy uh, um, how you're handling it. Um, <clears throat> that's the first thing. I think this is a, a big difference than, than six months ago. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that more and more lawyers are going against uh, the, the German government. Uh, there is a big uh, called uh, class action, which means a group of people went together and they, uh, yesterday they went against, um, not against the German government, they went directly against uh, Dr. Uh, Trosten and Dr. Wieler. Dr. Wieler is the head of the Robert Koch Institute in Germany and yeah. Dr. Trosten is the guy, maybe you heard his name also in, in, in UK, um, who founded this PCR test. Yeah. For, for, for testing the corona. Yeah. And, and uh, a group of, of lawyers from uh, LA and Germany, they, they, they came together with some uh, lawyers from Canada. Uh, so they went together and they said, hey, listening, everything is based on this PCR test. Yes. But what is if the PCR test is not that showing what they always telling us? Yeah. 
And so they now going against, directly against uh, the government, against Dr. Trosten, against the uh, uh, universities. And they just say, okay, you have to show us that the PCR can show that we are ill. And we all know it's not possible. It's not possible. There is another, another thing happened in Portugal uh, um, just a few days ago. In Portugal, uh, a judge said, um, <clears throat> Um, because some, some people went against the quarantine and they said, no, we're not going, you know. Yeah. And, and, and now <clears throat> there is one, one judge, he said following. Okay, first thing is, um, it's not the, it's, it's not the, 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 the work, uh, it's not the aim of the government to tell somebody that you are ill. This is the job of a doctor. <laughs> so the government... The government can't say, hey, check Lothar, you are ill and for the next, I don't know, eight or two weeks or either a days or two, uh, two weeks or something, you have to stay at home because this is a diagnosis. And diagnosis, doctors should do this and not governments. This is the first what, what they said. Yeah. And the second said, okay, the government is using the PCR test to say whether somebody's ill or how they call it now, uh, infected. Yeah. Uh, whether somebody is infected or not, but a PCR test can't, do, can't say this. A PCR a test is uh, 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 something in a laboratory where you just make from a small thing, a big thing, okay? Uh, using some enzymes and, and things. So uh, that's a PCR test. A PCR test is not saying you are infected. And uh, the lawyer, uh, sorry, the judge in <coughs> the court in, in Portugal, they, they said exactly that uh, some days ago. And now I think not only in Portugal, also in other countries, um, they will discuss this. So, <coughs> so a lot of things here uh, uh, changed. Um, at all, I would say, it, what happened at all in, in the whole world, Exactly what, what Edward Snowden said already in, in March or, or beginning of April in an in interview, when he said, you know, the problem is that the politicians, they will make a big crisis out of a very small crisis, just out of, a, let me say, a flu or something like this, you know, they make a big crisis because then they can, how, how you call this in English, then you can make up their mark, the politicians, you know, they, 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 they can say, oh, we are the greatest, oh, we can handle a big crisis, oh, we are so good, and we do all the, the good things, and we, we protect our country, we protect the old people, we yeah. protect even the children in the school, they never become ill, they never are super spreaders, but even they, we have to protect even in the kindergarten, the children. Yeah. And so now they are the, the big the big, I don't know how, how I can call them, the politicians meet well. And <clears throat> so, and this is the situation. And I think the worst thing is um, that a lot, not, not all, but a lot of the politicians, they know this. They know we made a mistake. They know the, how the situation was half a year ago. We made some, let me say, wrong decisions, which is okay. Everybody makes wrong decisions. Yeah, yeah. But now they have this big, big, big problem that they can't go say, oh, I'm sorry, oh, maybe we have to change it because they lose face and they, lose, they will lose the next elections if they would say, I'm sorry. And this is, this is why they're not changing it. And in some countries like, like in Germany or like I'm here in Spain at the moment, <clears throat> it's the same. They even will force the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this will go, I'm sure for, I don't know, a few months, half a year, one year longer, we will wear masks the whole next year. And uh, even if a vaccination, which will come, there will, a vaccination, I'm sure, will come. Even if, it's not really important, is this vaccination working or not? But the vaccination is just a way how they can later say, oh, look now, um, now we can, you don't have to wear a mask anymore because I don't know, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent or something is vaccinated. So now everything is fine. Exactly how we said this to you last year, you know, this will happen next year. But what happens at the same time? In Germany, around 800,000 companies at the moment are bankrupt. 800,000, check. 800,000 companies. We will have 
I don't know what kind of inflation next year. We will have so many bankrupt companies. We will have so many unemployed uh, people. Uh, it will be a disaster. And, and not only that, we have now in the, in, in, in the community, you know, the people, they are uh, they, they, they happy with the, with the government or they going against the government. We have only two groups now. Uh, people wearing a mask, people not wearing a mask. And so the people are fighting against each other. Everybody becomes aggressive. You just have to go for shopping and you see how aggressive the people are. And so on and so on. Uh, we will have a new generation of children. They will be ill, serious, mentally ill for years. This will be the first generation. We, we never had this in, in history of life that we will have a, a generation which will be serious mentally ill. I have some, some friends, psychologists, especially for children. Every day they could have 20 new customers. With customers, I mean children. Parents are coming. Um, it's a disaster. It's un unbelievable. Yesterday I read a, a new study coming from, from London, by the way, from UK. Um, we have around 18% less cancer cases in UK. Yes. But this is not that we have cancer case, we have less cancer diagnostic because nobody's going to a doctor, nobody's going to a hospital, nobody. So these are all the things, this will catch us not now, maybe even not next year, but in two years, in three years, in four years. Um, so the whole situation is, um, is even worse than it was a few months ago. <clears throat> but we have, let me say, <clears throat> Two, three good things. Um, the first is the lawyers. Yeah. I, I really hope that the lawyers will, will change here something. And, and the next thing is uh, in Germany, it's a big movement now from uh, companies. Yeah. So there's a new uh, uh, corporation, a new co yeah, corporation, uh, companies, they went together, a new group, and they say, okay, they not only say, in, we're going against uh, the government or we want to have more money or what they normally say. No, they're saying, hey, listening, the whole system is wrong. We need a complete system. The way how we were handling our customers, the way how we were handling our competitors, the way how we were handling the whole community, something is wrong. The whole system broke down now. Yeah. And now the uh, a lot of, of uh, companies, they, they came together or they're still coming together, thousands in Germany at the moment, and yeah. they say, hey, let's create a new system, a, a, a new way how we are work in the future together. And this is my, beside the lawyers, this is my second hope at the moment. <clears throat> Fantastic. You know, um, one of the unfortunate things about begging to differ or have conversations mm -hmm. around begging to differ about all kinds of science is that that's been latched onto by extreme right-wing politicians uh, who unfortunately, for a lot of us who are not that way inclined, as soon as we have this type of conversation, people assume, oh, you guys must be you know, right-wing fanatics, when in fact it's nothing but the truth. And what happened uh, for, for me is just before we had, we had right, three weeks before we had you on, we had... Um, Ivor Cummins, who's become a great hero for a lot of us, like you have, um, because he's constantly every week checking the literature, he's checking the research, and he's telling us all what's actually going on. And one of the great interviews he had was with a Croatian doctor who's one of the government advisory group in Croatia. We've got one in the UK, I'm sure you've got one in Germany. And this is a so-called top <clears throat> scientist. And he admitted that he asked the prime minister of uh, Croatia, you know, why is it all of the democratic governments in the world are going against the real science? And, and he said, the prime minister said to him, because unfortunately right at the beginning, the media who like a negative story started pushing the narrative that it was going to be the end of the world and so on and all these millions would die. And all of the democratic governments made the, as you said, made the mistake of going down the China route of just closing everything down rather than even listening to the, the World Health Organization at that point that had a plan for pandemics that didn't include locking down, doesn't include masks and so on. 
And so the truth, the truth is, for, for me and for everybody who comes here to this particular thing, is, you know, it's like you said, they made mistakes, we're allowed to make a mistake, but for goodness sake, own up. It's getting ridiculous now. Um, and if you look at the science of, Ira Cummins would tell repeatedly, and he interviews lots of top scientists, I mean, this second wave was predicted because it's the same pattern of a flu. And when something like COVID comes along, the flu takes a back seat, COVID takes over, but it still follows the same process. We're in a second phase. And the sad thing is, it will go away again, probably in the spring. And as you said, the government will say, oh, it went away because of our, our vaccine. It went away because of our, our science, rather than it was going away anyway. And so one of the things that you always impressed me about was you always had a confidence about alternatives or maybe use a safer word, complementary things people could do to tackle the huge issue of cancer, but other things too. Um, where's your head, uh, Lothar, in terms of um, feeling more confident about surviving COVID? You've mentioned the children and so on, but what's your thoughts around that um, to help people? I mean, the big issue going to be for a lot of people, I suspect, is will they take the vaccine? Now, I heard a conversation, well, I was part of a conversation where someone who used to work for one of the big pharmaceuticals who has come out with reports that they've got a 94% success rate on a vaccine, you know, who used to work, there still works in the industry advising family and friends not to take it. You know, not to take it, but to wait to see what happens to those who do. What, where, where's your head with that? You, you're usually very good with that sort of awareness. Where's yeah. your head with that? Well, well look, 99% of the people right now are not, when they have a, a positive uh, PCR test, they are not infected, you know. Yeah. And 90, more than 99% will survive. Yeah. Because of what? Because of our immune system. <laughs> yes. So, Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about uh, the human immune system and nobody's talking about what is the immune system doing to survive. Yeah. Or we go the other way. Why are some people dying on Corona, but 99 something of all the people are not dying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, of course, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, blaming the people who wants to earn money with that now, like the pharmaceutical companies. Come on, this is their job, you know. Yeah. So I'm not blaming them. This, this is okay for me. <clears throat> but the so-called scientists and the politicians, they never ask why are most of the people are surviving? Yeah. What is it? What is it that people let survive them? <clears throat> And it's our immune system. But what does this mean really, our immune system, you know? Our yeah. immune system is just used to handle virus, yeah. bacteria, yeah. fungi, everything. So this is a normal thing. This is what evolution made, you know? Otherwise, we wouldn't survive at all. So this is a totally normal thing. And this is also the answer for who is dying. We, we know now that the average age is 80. In Sweden, it's 86. <laughs> Think about 86 <laughs> yeah. years old. Yeah. Yeah. They, this is the average age where people are dying in Sweden. In Germany, it's around 80. In Italy, it's also around 80. In most countries, it's around 80 years. So, yeah. Yeah. But what is with 80? If you are 80, a few things are not working like with 20 or with 40 or with 60. This is a normal thing. Yeah. When, For example, if you take blood from, from somebody uh, who lives in a retirement house is 80 something, the blood will not have perfect, uh, uh, you know, white blood cells, red blood cells. It's a normal, it's normal for 80, it's not normal for 20. No. And this is the whole situation. So <clears throat> what should we do at the moment? We should support our immune system the body and the mind of course yeah yeah but what happens at the moment especially with the old people 
the government is doing everything to destroy the immune system. Yes. They, they don't allow the people to go for a walk in the park. They don't allow to see the, the people, the, the family. But this, if you are 80, check, this may be the two most important thing in your life. Yeah. Yeah. See your family, maybe have something, a good food, yeah. and go out for a walk or see some friends. Yeah. That's the most important thing for your immune system. Yeah. With the food, we can't change. But the family and going out for a walk and see my friends, this we should do. Because this is supporting the immune system. And this is exactly what happened. Of course, there are a few people who are younger and they maybe have some other problems and they even can die on Corona. But this is a normal thing. This is like every year, even some young people die on a flu. This yeah. is very seldom, but it can happen. And it happened thousands of times around the world in the last years. Yeah. So what can we do supporting the immune system? <clears throat> and there's another thing. Um, because everybody is focused on vaccination now. Nobody is focused on a therapy. Yeah. Uh, there, there are a few discussions uh, about this or that hydro, uh, hydrochlorine or, or things like this, you know, where, uh, as a therapy. But right now, nearly nobody is discussing uh, a therapy. Nobody is making, I even, for example, I don't know one study where they took some, some people with corona and they gave them, I don't know, vitamin C infusions or vitamin cocktail infusions or some, some other therapies. There are only really a few, few studies out, but nearly no studies. But think about, everybody is claiming that this is one of the, the, the most dangerous virus and nobody is making studies. <laughs> Until now, we don't have one study, really study what is going on with this virus. For example, how could we make this? <laughs> we have now all the cruise ships uh, uh, laying in the house, right? So. They can't go out. They're not allowed. We could do, I don't know, 5,000 people on a ship and we wait for two months what happens. Yeah. yeah. This would be easy to make. Yeah. To find 5,000 people who would do this would be very easy. And at the end, we would exactly know yeah. how dangerous is this virus. Nobody is doing this. Yeah. Absolutely. Nobody is doing, nobody is really doing a study. Uh, this week, a, a study came out from Wuhan in China, where, where everything started. They tested 9 million people, 9 million. And Wuhan, you know, was totally close to the city. Yeah. So this was really, uh, it's a really good study. And what did they find out? What is the, a lot of things I found out, but I just want to focus on one point. And the point is that all the people, you know, who were uh, uh, positive, you know, tested, and they had no symptoms, yeah. there was not one spreader in the whole group. Not one, not one patient, one infected patient was giving the virus to somebody else. Yeah. Nine million. This is the biggest study it just came out a few, a few days ago. So... What is it saying, Jack? Think about it. It is just saying what we already knew. If you are ill, like a terrible flu, yeah. Um, yeah. and you, you can maybe infect your, somebody else. Yeah. But if you have a flu without a symptom, you will not infect somebody. So it's a very, very easy thing. And nobody is, is, is talking about, nobody is handling this. And so we could send all the children to school without a problem. We could go for shopping. If we, have, if we don't have uh, symptoms, we, there will be nothing. And if somebody now, so-called scientists are coming and they say, hey, 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 no, no, Lothar, you are not right. Um, maybe you, even if you have no symptoms, you can be a super spreader or something. Then I tell them, hey, this is the biggest study with 9 million people in China. Show me another study which is showing something different. Show me another study where, where more people, uh, 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 where they detest more people than in Wuhan with this study. Yeah. So at the moment, you know, what we know today is if you have no symptoms, you are not ill. 
This is another strange and crazy situation. Think about it. They call us now ill or infected without symptoms. Yeah. What kind of illness is this, you know, where we have those symptoms? Yeah. This is a really, really strange situation. And everything goes back on a PCR test. And a PCR test can't see the difference between a living and a dead material. <laughs> so... No, so this is, is, is really strange. And, and you don't have to be a scientist to understand this. You don't have to be, you know, normal thinking is, is, is enough to understand all the situations. And, and the question here really is, why is nearly everybody understanding this except the politician? You know, Lothar, if I can say this, uh, you will remember a way back when you opened the centre and that same weekend, we, you had the big event in Stuttgart, uh, People Against Cancer, and we were there yep. and you very kindly had, um, or, or Klaus, I think it was, was, was translating the German to those of us who weren't German. And you had a doctor up on the stage, uh, an oncologist who had retired, and he got, he got very, very upset at one point, very emotional when talking about the patients uh, that had died more or less saying because of treatment rather than that rather than the illness and I remember I was so moved by that man and moved by you that when I got back to the UK standing on the big stage in the concert hall I I mentioned I told the whole story and a, a woman who was a professor at Glasgow University came to see me at the break and said she would introduce me to the top man in the in the UK for cancer a professor that she knew and I went to see this professor, I got an appointment, went to see the professor and I told them all about that conference and that particular professor that you had had on the stage and I explained it all to him and, and I said I'd be willing to pay for his students and or him to go and visit you guys and he then at the end of it said to me so where, where is this guy a professor? And I said, Germany. And he said, ah, German professors aren't good enough. <laughs> and then, and so that's the point. The point is, anybody listening to what you just said about Wuhan and 9 million people, part of a, of, of a piece of research, I can just see the silly politicians in this country and those very arrogant doctors just, ah, but it's Chinese. You know, in other words, it's not it's not British or it's not German. It's, it, it, this this is unfortunately the underlying issue that they won't listen to anything outside their own little paradigm, and it's a and it's a real a real tragedy. Um, but that, of course, as you say, what I think which is very powerful about you, and for all the people who are on here on a Wednesday night, um, as we know, it's frightening how often it's just common sense. And people who have made mistakes hold on to the paradigm because they can't see out of it. And we're all being led into this dreadful future over the next three or four years as all of this catches up on us from the child uh, anxieties and the mental illness right through to people dying because they didn't go to the doctor. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a tragic situation. Are you? Do you think in Germany with your with not you particularly, but the whole of the movement um, constantly demonstrating, are there any chinks of light with the government or with politics? Are any of the, the newspapers beginning to have a conversation? Is it on the radio or is it just closed down like it is here? Yes and no. Yes, because a, a few things changing. Uh, or a few things changed already. Uh, the politicians, no. The politicians, I think, they will, they, they will go the other way. They will go stronger. They will go harder. Because they know, unfortunately, that a lot of people and they will uh, go, you know, now making the, 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 the strong man. Uh, no, from that side, I, I don't see any, any, any good. But where I see a few changes is even in the media. I know that most media are terrible at the moment. Yeah. 
a few of the of the of the, of the big yellow press, uh, uh, what they see that a lot of their their reader they going away they don't like what they're writing so now in germany i can see you know in germany there is the the number one magazine you know um it's like like sun in in, in uk yeah. um more and more they are also writing very critical what the government is doing <clears throat> because what they want what they don't want to have is that they're losing too many of their readers yeah. this is this is so there is a change at the moment they are not doing this because they <laughs> think that you know that we are right and they are wrong no 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 they they just try to do everything to keep the readers you know that they're not going away in the day and, and also of course to keep all the people who are paying for ads in in their magazines and, and online um, so so this is what they're doing at the moment but this is a good thing this is a good thing that they understand hey uh, more and more people are not happy with the whole situation what what the government is doing um, but uh, on on the other side uh, this week in germany they they changed a, a terrible law which means you know that um, you know what, what happened um, when people were demonstrating the government tried to stop the demonstration yeah. or when people you know they had some meetings at home and and the police came and, and, and stopped uh, the, the meeting uh, uh, the party or something um, quite often uh, the judges then at the court they said hey no 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 um, the government was not allowed to do this and so a lot of things changed but now, unfortunately, since last Wednesday in Germany, this law changed now. And now the government can nearly, I say, nearly do whatever they want. So this is a very, very terrible situation. But there is always a yin and a yang, okay? So from my side, what is that the yang here in the yin is very easily, you know? It's like, I, I compare this with alcoholics, you know? If an alcoholic stops drinking when he has a big pressure, a big, big, big pressure. And the same is, is here. You know, the people, only a few thousand going really on the street, but we should be millions going on the street. Yeah, because yeah. I know that millions are not happy at the moment. Yeah. But they, they are not brave enough or they, 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 they don't trust or they, it, it doesn't matter why they are not going on the street, but they are not going. Yeah. And it sounds maybe strange, but you know, the pressure is not high enough. I think the, the pressure is not high enough. In, in Germany, you know, they, they give a lot of money to the, to the companies right now. Yeah. So even companies are going bankrupt many, but on the other side, uh, especially the, 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 the big companies, they get so much money from the government right now. Yeah. And, and the government is supporting them. Yeah. And the government is, is giving money to the unemployed people. The government is, is giving to all the people, you know, who are now, uh, uh, they call it a short working, you know, if, if you can go just for one, two, three, four months, you can go home, and, but, but you still have your job and you can go back and you get money. And so they all support it. And so some of the people, even some of my friends are saying, hey, it's a good time. Yeah, yeah. I get money, I don't have to work. So for me, it's a good thing if the whole crisis, maybe until Easter next year or even until summer yeah. and so on and so on. So, um, so for me, what I don't see is that the pressure is high enough. And so if the government now is going stronger against this, this means that the pressure will go up. And um, I know this is very bad, but on the other side, it's a good thing because more and more people started to thinking, started thinking. Yeah. And this is always good as we know, Jack. Yeah. If yeah. people start to think, hey, is everything okay here? What we are doing in Germany, for example, every four years we go for election. Yeah. And then for the next four years, the politicians, they, they will make it. So, but now more and more people are thinking about the whole system. The whole system is, is this okay? Uh, think about the whole banking system, for example, the whole, you know, um, uh, minus interest rates and things like this. So more and more people are thinking, hey, maybe there's something going wrong at all, which has nothing to do with Corona. Yeah. And this is the good thing here now. If the pressure becomes higher, 
the people start to think more about the whole system. And not only in Germany or UK, around the whole world. Is it okay how we handle the whole migration uh, uh, situation? Yeah. Is it okay how we handle the people in Africa? Is it okay how we handle the, the poor countries? Is yeah. it okay that right now, thousands of poor people are dying because they don't have food? Yeah, yeah. And, and the only thing Bill Gates and these people are discussing is how can we vaccinate them? Yes. And things like this, normally, I can't discuss this with, with, let me say, normal people on the street. But right now, if I go shopping, if I go on the street, if I talk to other people, I discuss all things like this. Yeah. And, and, and or I see a lot of people, they, they're standing here and asking for food. Yeah. This was not a year ago, okay? We yeah. always had poor people, but uh, normally they get enough support from the government. But right now, the whole, let me say, the whole system is breaking down. And that is a good thing. I think this is a really good thing. Even it's, of course, for, for the persons, sometimes it's very, very bad. And when you look worldwide to, to the suicide rate, it's a disaster. Yeah, It's such a disaster. I study from uh, uh, Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, I, I can't remember, it was uh, August or September, they had more suicides than the whole last year in one month. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. one month. The same is in, even in Japan, even Japan is not that bad, but also the suicide rates in Japan are terrible high at the moment and also nearly everywhere and so on and so on. So I understand that the whole situation and the pressure for some people is terrible, terrible, terrible. And so many people even dying. But when you look globally, when you look to, to how the people are start thinking now, then I have to say it's a good thing because more and more people all over the world, and, it, and, and I have friends all over the world, doesn't matter if I talk to my, my friend in Taipei or in Hong Kong or in Bangkok, or in, in South Africa, I had a long discussion right now. And everywhere, in the same, everywhere, it's the same kind of discussions. And without Corona, this would not be possible. So this is really the yang in the yin um, of, of the whole crisis, yeah. that this crisis is, 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 a, is a chance that we think about whether the whole world is so good as we always uh, did think. But this, this is fantastic optimism, which doesn't surprise me from you. But, it, but nevertheless, it is, it, is, it is very, very hopeful. Um, the, the challenge, though, is how do we build the pressure? Where does the pressure come from? Oh, hopefully naturally. I mean, one of the things that is going to be obviously interesting is when it comes to the first doses of a vaccine, who's going to voluntarily take the vaccine? Um, have you any views on that? Do you think that might be where the pressure comes from, that people just maybe refuse and it starts to become a big issue? Or what, what, what do you think might help turn the, turn the tide in terms of the pressure? Any ideas of how that might manifest? Well, the, the, the vaccination will play a big, a big role. And, and I'm sure the government will use the, the messenger RNA vaccination, you know, not, not the so-called, you know, there are two kinds of vaccinations, the vector vaccination, which yeah. is the normal one we're using right now for, for, for measles or things like this. Yeah. But um, um, the new one now, the, the messenger RNA vaccination is, 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 a, is a different story. This is uh, the, the, the biggest testing in, uh, in medicine, which, which which we ever had, which we ever had. There, there's no no other other um, in whole history of medicine. We never had something like this, and um, but it will come because this is the way out for the politicians. So I'm sure they will focus it, and of of course, uh, a lot of people will earn a fortune on on, on this. Um, not only the pharmaceutical company, a lot of organizations, a lot of governments, a lot of uh, other people. They will earn unbelievable money on that so so this will come we, we will not stop it even even maybe it will be later a disaster in a few years but we will see this will come and i this is also the young in the yin yeah. i think this is the most terrible thing what will happen to millions of people next year on the other side i have to say 
because this is the way out for the politicians that they can say, hey, look, now with the vaccination, we can maybe next year you, you, you can travel again or you don't have to wear a mask or things like this. So for them, it's a way out. And this is a good thing because we have to come back to, to normal life. Uh, people, they can't handle all this aggressivity, all this um, 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 uh, brutal force from the government, all these things. This is very, very, very bad. So, so this is the good thing with, with the vaccination. But again, people have to understand, and I, oh, everybody who hear me now, please never, ever take this kind of vaccination. Because we have no idea what will happen? No, nobody knows it. I know that they all say it will be safety. How can they know it that it's safety? It's impossible. The, to test this, at least the minimum, check absolutely minimum for six, seven years. It's, think about AIDS. AIDS, they, they try to find this now for 35 years without results. And it's exactly the same. This is what they try to do, you know. They try to find a vaccination which can stop this uh, with, with, with the AIDS virus. And it, it's no chance. And why was there no chance? Because they also could earn a lot of money with, with, with the AIDS vaccination. Yeah. Because it's nearly impossible um, um, what they're claiming at the moment. This is just not true what they tell us. And it's also, pardon, what they're saying is, you know, the messenger RNA goes only in the RNA, is making this virus, and then the immune system is making antibodies and so on. Yeah. No, this is just not true. Of course, a messenger RNA, not to everybody, of course, but there is a possibility to, so, uh, the, the, the word for that is an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. And this reverse transcriptase is able to change RNA to DNA. So there is a chance that it goes into your DNA. And if, if this happens, there is no therapy for that, you know. You, you're lost if this happens to you. Yeah. So um, I only can say never, ever do this vaccination. But I know that it will come. Yeah. I know that many people will do. But check, I tell you one, one thing here. I'm 100% sure not that many people like they at the moment are thinking, will do it. For example, the, the Spanish government, <clears throat> they will, the Sanchez is preparing now, like in Germany also, they do the same at the moment. <clears throat> they preparing starting vaccination in January. Yeah. And they, in, in Spain, they want to vaccinate 35 Sp million Spanish people, 35 million. And what they think, Mr. Sanchez, that everybody will say, hey, give it to me, give it to me. But I have a lot of friends, doctors in hospitals all over the world. And I spoke to, to some doctors in Germany because what they will do is they will say, hey, the vaccination, who will get it first? Yeah. The, the doctors, the nurses, the teachers, uh, uh, you know, the, the people who are, let me say, imp are important for the system. Yeah. But what they... What they are not really thinking is, if you are a hospital, let me say a hospital has 200 doctors, 400 nurses, and 400 some other people in the offices. So they think that all 200 doctors, they will go to get, no, no. Think about, I, I give you an, another a nice figure, uh, hepatitis uh, uh, B and C vaccination. You know, who is, uh, for, for whom it's really dangerous for people who are handling blood like a doctor in a hospital. No. So how many doctors in Germany are vaccinated against this? Less than 10% check, less than 10%. Uh, B, I think it's even 5% only. So the doctors, they say, no, 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 no. They, of course, they say to the patients, hey, you should do this vaccination, but the doctors are not doing it. Because the doctors are not that stupid like lo most politicians are thinking. And there are also millions, uh, not millions, but thousands, uh, ten thousands of nurses. They will also say, no, then I stop working. Yeah. I will not go back to a hospital. Then I go for a waiter or I go to another hospital or I go somewhere else. But for sure, 
A lot of my friends are doctors and nurses or working in hospitals. And of course, my friends may be a different group than, than, than the, 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 the mainstream. But I tell you, my friends, they will not go for this vaccination. They will not allow to vaccinate them. So what will the government do if, let me say, from 100 doctors, just 10 or 12, 20, and I'm sure that will be 10 or 20, wow. say no, we will not do that. So, so the whole idea of vaccination, uh, vaccinate millions of people next year, I don't think that this will work like thinking. I, I don't see that all the people just will run. And it's, you know, if it would be a vector vaccination, I would say a lot of people will go. But the people, they're also watching the news every evening. And think about one year ago, nobody, nobody in Germany who was not in medicine like I am, you know, had ever in RNA vaccination. They didn't know it. Even a lot of companies working for centuries now on that, you know, but um, no, they, they even didn't know. But today you can ask everybody, nearly everybody knows what, what this is, you know, what is RNA, what is mRNA, what is a mRNA vaccination. These are normal things in our society today. And so, so, and the people are not that stupid. So I personally, I'm 100% sure in, in, in Spain, like they thinking that in the first few months, uh, 35 million people will go and asking for the vaccination, maybe 3.5 million, but not 35 million. Oh, oh. Yeah, are you sure, are you conscious right now? It will not work. I'm 100% sure. Wow. Wow. And so what do you think? What's your thoughts on keeping yourself healthy so that you, your immune system's strong? Are you, have you made any inroads with that? Are you finding any research that helps? I tell you, like always, you know, that I know how people who have cancer, even in a final stage, how they come back to life. Yeah, and it it's always the same, you know. How because if you have two final stage, you you need your immune system. I think we can agree with that, right? So, yeah. so what are these people doing? They go for happiness. Yeah. They go for a great life. Yeah. They go how you would say for a fantastic life. <laughs> yes. And this is what we have to do now. It's the same. It's exactly the same. This is what we have to do. We have to take care about ourselves, our family, our friends, yeah. that we have a fantastic life, whatever this means to each, each single person. But this is what we have to do. We have to, to, to get the best food. Yeah. We have to be happy. We have to see love. Yeah. We have to have the people around us who we love. That's it. That's the whole thing. And we have to, on the other side, we have to stay away from all the bad people, from all the bad situation, from all the bad work, from all the things we don't like. Yeah. It's nothing really changed. This what helped before is helping now also. We just have to be maybe more aware of it. We, ha we have to really think about um, what is a good day today. When I get up in the morning, I do my affirmation and I, I will ask myself, what should I do today that, that I come closer to my goals, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now it's even more important. Yeah. Now it's even more important because this is what stabilized, this is what's supporting my immune system. And this is what I have to do. And if, if I have to say it in one, in one sentence, it's just live a happy life. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And, and Lothar, how, how is the pandemic affecting the functioning of the centre? Are, are you guys still able to do the work there or are you getting more challenging, getting people in? Uh, you know, what's happening at the centre? No, um, you know, I know this sounds strange now a little bit, Czech, but um, we are a part of the, the winners in this situation. You know, there are winners and losers in, in the big middle group, of course, yeah? yeah. But, but the center 
is is not affected in in a terrible way. We are affected that let me say people from Switzerland uh, or from Australia, from Africa, where where, where we have uh, normally foreigners, they are not allowed to come at the moment. Yeah, but that's all. Um, so this is this is uh, with the, the 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 challenge with the, with the center. But on the other side, you know what we have? We have quite more people from Germany who wants to come to us. Wonderful. Because cancer is not gone. No. And and heart problems are not gone. No. And diabetes is not gone. You know, all the, all the illnesses they're still here. Yeah. And 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 why are more people wants to? To come to us from not only from Germany, also from from abroad, but, but especially from Germany. Why are more people are coming? Because more people are thinking. More people they take time for thinking. Yeah. More people they have the time for thinking, because they are not working. And more people they let me say go away from the children and, uh, and the husbands or wives. Also, humans, you know. So what are they doing? They just the thinking and when you start thinking when you have cancer you you will come to the point where you just think about hey does this illness maybe does my tumor has something to do with my life with my past yeah. with um with how how i'm thinking and all these things so and more and more people are doing this kind of process this kind of thinking and this is why more and more people they want to come to us so at the moment well with the, at the moment i mean the last six months quite more people wants to come to our center than we could take That's yeah I'm, I'm really pleased for this. so so yeah, yeah, you, could, you, you could you could you uh, could um um uh, call us a winner of the of the corona crisis but only on on that side that more people wants to come sometimes it's even hard for us because sometimes we have to say to people sorry no we can't take you and and this is also not a nice situation believe me this is not not always nice and but so anyway so we are not really in in a terrible situation at, at the center and from the from the government side uh, because we are not a hospital, you know, by law, we are a center, we are like a hotel, they handle us, and, and many hotels are closed. Yeah. But um, because they know that a lot of cancer patients coming to us, so they allow us, of course, we have to do some special care about some cleaning and all these things like everybody has to do in, in a hotel or in, in a restaurant. Um, and, and we have to do this and we have to take care about um, more than before about all these things. But um, at all, um, we, we more people wants to come and we are not uh, really affected like, like, like many, many other companies. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. I, I'm so pleased to hear that. Um, I mean, one of the things, <clears throat> every time I've been in your company, I've always thoroughly enjoyed it. it. And there's always the expectation when you get passionate, you'll share some new things that you've found. You know, you find someone in Russia doing something or someone, you know, in South Africa doing something and you you share it. And is there anything you're finding out there, you know, with through your networks that's exciting you about? cancer treatments or and or other things that might be inspiring for the audience? Mm, really new. I would only say uh, really new is, is always the same. It's the, the confirmation, yes. you know? Yeah. So, um, for example, even, even now with Corona, I was traveling uh, a bit in the last weeks. Um, I was in, in five different countries and, and also talking to, to some uh, doctors and patients. Yeah. But they confirm what, what, what we are, that we are on the right way, I would say. Yeah. There is no, no really new treatment at all. Of course, um, some friends in, in, in China, for, for example, in Jiangshou, they, there is a hospital. They, they, they published a, a, a nice work about some antibodies. And there is, there is also in, in Beijing, I found uh, uh, somebody um, wrote to me and then I spoke, uh, Skyped with him and he showed me, you know, that they did a, a nice work with, with pancreatic cancer and things. So there's always a few new things, but there is nothing, you know, what they normally use the word breakthrough, you know, yeah. there is no breakthrough because no. Um, there can't be. There can't be because it's still the, the the same old story you know you are unhappy you have stress uh, it doesn't matter what kind of stress and i don't go in, into uh, why does somebody uh, gets cancer now yeah. and uh, but the, 
at all, I would say, no, no breakthrough, no nothing new, but all the time confirmation, confirmation, confirmation that that what we were claiming in the last years, that this is just 100% correct, you know, that uh, cancer is a problem of stress yeah. and uh, to handle the stress situation is the, the most important therapy. It, this is uh, still the same, yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, and in terms of your day-to-day -day experience, one of the one of the things that that always inspired me about whenever I've been in Stuttgart to the centre um, is the fact that everybody gets out for a walk. You know, we know that getting out for a walk is important, but getting vitamin D from our skin seems to be very important. You still think that's important, getting out? I know, you, obviously, you, everyone associates you through this with Germany, but you live in, you live in, you're very lucky, you live in Mallorca, um, which is a favourite place of mine. Um, do you still think vitamin D is important? Yes, absolutely, for sure. You know, there are two ways to bring energy in our body. And I think we, we agree that energy is the most important thing, otherwise we, we can't live. So, um, of course, the most easy way and the, and the way how we like it, of course, is food. Yeah. So this is why I'm always saying, you know, you, you need living food. You need food where are still electrons in, you know, and not all the dead food you normally can buy in, in, in a shopping center. Yeah. Um, um, so, so food is the, the, the most easy way. But the second way, and we just forget it, is light. Yeah. So from that point, yes, absolutely. Going out and get, getting light. If you can get some sun, it's even better, okay? But but like now in, in, in winter time, you know, sun is not the most important thing. Um, sun is just, let me say, a little more heavy light, okay? Yeah. But it's not important. This is what, what you need, what, what you have to get is, uh, I, I don't normally use the word light or sun, you know? I like more the sun waves, you know? Because yeah. even if you get out at night, when, the, when it's dark outside, you get the waves from the sun. You're just on the other side of the planet, but you still get this kind of waves. And this is what uh, Johanna Budwig, in, in all her books she wrote all the time, you know, how important this is, because uh, through our skin, we, we, the, the, the light goes in our body. You know, yeah. and, and and this helps us a lot, really a lot, to get more energy. Yeah. And and if you just go for a walk, you know, a walk is just you know where, where you think, yeah, this is make some fun. And no, a walk can be a therapy ten times more important than uh, I I don't know what kind of medicine. Yeah. So so going out, living out is really important. I give you a, a nice example. Um, Johanna Budwig, sometimes people came to her and said, hey, I have, uh, I don't know, somebody from my family is so ill, uh, laying in bed and, and can't do anything. Um, and can you still help? And yeah. she said, nobody knows it, but you can test something. And you can, you can do following. Um, give them the oil protein diet, but many people who are very serious ill, they can't eat anymore. Yeah. So they, they don't have the power to eat the food, the normal food. So what can you do? You can give them to drink fresh breast juices. You can do some oils on the skin because yeah. in, in oils, there are a lot of electrons and these electrons can, can go through the skin into the body and you can bring the people out. She always said, as more as you are ill, as more time you should be out of your house. Yeah. But how is the situation today? Today, of course, is if you are ill, you are in the house. Yeah. And but you should go out. And so I have I have this, this big big fortune that I know a few people who were so deadly ill in in such a final stage that they even couldn't eat anymore and they came back. In, need, in most of them, they just did this, you know, drinking fresh breast juices, taking some oils or not, or taking some enemas with oils, and they were out, out in the light, in the sun, just out to get the, the sun waves. And um, 
I know for, let me say, normal medicine people, they would say I'm crazy if I'm saying this, you know, but I have seen it, you know, nobody has, has to tell me, you know, whether this is working or not, because I know it, I don't have to believe it, I know it. Yeah. And um, um, so going back to your question, is this important? I would say right now in the Corona time, this is one of the most important things, just going out uh, for sport, for walking, for sitting, for reading, for whatever. If you have the time, take the jacket if it's cold, but go out. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, because this is one of the best things you can do for your health. Yeah, and one of the things that always comes across with uh, what you do at the centre is the detoxification. And you, you mentioned enemas there. Um, do, do you think healthy people or apparently healthy people would benefit from, say, an enema now and again, once a week or more? What, what, what's your thinking about that as a preventative, or is it really not appropriate? Well, um, do you have to do it, and can you become 100 without the enema? For sure, yes. <laughs> yeah. So from that side, I, I, I would not say, hey, you have to do an enema every week or something. Yeah. No, absolutely not. But nobody becomes 100 without going through a crisis yeah, yeah. through a, a body i mean, I mean a, a physical crisis yeah. and here for sure it would help and as a prevention for example i like to to fasten every year you know for a few days or even weeks um, so so if you do that and then at that time if you help your body to bring things out, or if you do, for example, when you do not water enemas, if you do, for example, coffee enemas, which uh, then supporting your liver, yeah. then you, you can use that as, as, as a therapy. You can use that maybe for one or two weeks a year, every year as, as a prevention, you know, like just eating nothing for, for one or two weeks is, uh, is one of the best prevention maybe you can do, absolutely. Or doing uh, time by time, you do a bath with baking soda in, you know, that the acid going out, um, um, through your, uh, going out of your body. Um, this is also something, you know, cheap, it's nice, and it's helping your body. Um, it, as a, we're doing it mostly as a therapy, but of course you also can do it as a prevention. But do you have to do any masks? No, of course not. Um, if you live a healthy, nice life, you don't have to do any masks. But can you do it as a therapy, as prevention? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so let's let's explore this if you've got a, a few more minutes. Um, tell us about the how to do the baking soda bath. You know, how many spoonfuls or whatever in the oh, bath? Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the idea? The idea behind a, 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 a baking soda bath is just that, you know, the pH value in, in most countries, you know, uh, of normal water is around 7 pH, mm -hmm. uh, very neutral. And, and if you do baking soda, let me say 100 to 200 gram, it depends on, on how large uh, the, the, yeah. the best tube is. Um, so if... Um, if you do this baking soda into the water, the pH value will go over eight, sometimes even 8.5 or something. Don't go over nine or something because otherwise, you know, it's, it's not very healthy for your skin. So, so over eight is already, already good and 8.5 is, is nearly perfect. So when you go in the water um, and the water is um, 38 degrees, which means it's just a little bit higher than your normal uh, um, um, uh, body, um, 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 yeah, a, a decrease. And <clears throat> so, so then what will happen, you know, through the skin, the acid, which are normally uh, laying in the tissue under the skin, you know, it will go through the skin into the water. Right. So when you are in the water and you know, and you, you, you brush a little bit the skin, this will help. And, um, and you do this, let me say, for around 30, hour, uh, 30 hours, <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes, Jake, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for 30 minutes, um, um, then already a lot of, of uh, acids just going out. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's a normal thing that we have uh, that kind of acids in, in, in our uh, body, in our tissue. 
Um, so, so this is, for example, this is one thing uh, I really can recommend to everybody. There are, let me say two things I really recommend to everybody. One is the baking soda bus, which um, just you go for half an hour, 38 degrees, 150 gram uh, of baking soda in the water, and you just lay and you relax and you hear a little bit music and you think about yeah. all the good things to do some visualization yeah. this is this is not really a bad thing right so this is the first thing and the second thing is just drink every day or every second day just a little bit of sauerkraut juice of course yeah. Why? Or, or another fermentated juice if you can't handle sauerkraut juice you just do some fermentated juice okay it doesn't matter what what kind of where you have some 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 um, a lactate in you know this is this is the, what you need some right moving lactate you know in, in a ferment but sauerkraut juice is still the, the the queen of all the juices okay so so if you drink this this will this will help your your body um, that the ph value in the blood will really stay always in in a perfect range this is this is the, the reason why you should drink these fermented juices and this is really not only for for when you are ill or cancer patient this is one of the the, the best prevention thing maybe you can do for your body so these two things to bring the acid out and to help that the, the blood ph uh, acid value stays around this 7.23 um, with the sauerkraut juice or with any kind of fermented juices um, this is, uh, I would say, the two things you can do. It's very cheap. It's very nice. It's it's not a big thing. It's it's not expensive at all. And uh, if you want to do prevention on a body level, on a body level, then do these two things. You know, on a mind level, of course, just being happy. Yeah, yeah. So we always come back to being happy. Yeah. So I know people will want to be very specific to, to, to understand this. Um, just to go over it again. So it's not bicarbonate of soda, it's actually baking powder as opposed to bicarbonate of soda, or does it matter? No, no, you know, um, you even can use a mixture of different kinds of salts, you know. Okay. Um, you know, the only thing what must happen with the water is that the pH value goes up, you know, to eight or over eight. So what kind of salt, you know, baking soda is just the cheapest uh, yeah. um, kind where you can buy. I don't know how it's in England, but in Germany, you can buy in, in each shop nearly. Everybody yeah. where, where you can buy something for, for baking a cake, yeah. you can buy baking soda as well. Yeah. So I think in UK it's the same. So, yeah. so baking soda is the most cheapest and, 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 and which is and you've said You've said 100 grams, maybe 150 grams yeah. the size yeah. of the bath. Going back to the sauerkraut juice, as you know, in the UK, sauerkraut isn't isn't as popular. Yeah. It's, it's very popular. Yeah, I know. You probably can find on the on the supermarket shelf a jar of sauerkraut. Are we talking about the juice that's in the jar there? And of course. So well, you can do the sauerkraut juice, of course, by yourself, but it's a lot of work to do it, you know. Um, but uh, I know also in, in, in UK, I, I saw already in, in, in some of the shops, just, you know, fermented juices. Uh, this yep. can be yep. carrot, this can yep. be uh, a red beet, this can yep. be a vegetable mixture. Uh, I'm sure in, in the so-called organic shops today, you will find it. In, yeah. in, 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 in UK, I'm 100% sure you, you find fermented juices. So it must not be uh, uh, sauerkraut because this is, yeah. uh, you are right, very popular only in Germany. Yeah. Um, but yes, you can do it. Oh, by the way, if you like sauerkraut, you just can eat sauerkraut. You don't yeah. have to drink the juice. Okay. Uh, for example, I was uh, some years ago, I did a seminar in, in Poland and uh, I was in a hotel. And in the morning, they always had even two, two, three different kind of sauerkrauts there. Right. Right. So, so um, yeah. um, then I, I was first thinking, hey, to eat sauerkraut in the morning for breakfast, this is really, wow, even for German, I tell you, this was really strange. But I was there a few days, so I did it. And at the end, I found out, hey, it's not bad at all. You, yeah. I also can do that. Yeah. But I'm back now um, um, uh, to the juice, meanwhile, yes. Yeah, yeah. So how, if you're taking the sauerkraut juice or fermented juice, is it a particular amount? Is it a small glass or is it a big glass? What, what are you talking oh, about? Oh, no, no. You know, um, 
if if you are not really ill, you know, if you use yeah. it more as a prevention, you know, yeah. um, you know, um, uh, for drinking a snaps, okay, just a small yeah. glass. This is, uh, you know, what what is it, 10, 20 milliliters? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's enough already. Um, of course, if you are serious ill and you and your your colon can handle it. Um, Joanna Budrick recommended quite more, 50, 100, up to even 200 milliliters, depending on the on the weight of your body. Um, but but for prevention and just you you don't have to, you know, it's just a little bit what you need. And can, there are fermented um, milks or creams. Are they, can we, people take them if they want? Together? No, no instead of say the if they don't want fruit juice or they don't want sauerkraut. They could oh. use a fermented milk, could they? Um, yeah, fermented milk. Most of the <laughs> fermented milk doesn't have really the, 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 the acid, you know. What yeah. you need is the lactate. It depends, is there lactate in or not? In most of the milks I know, there is no lactate or, or nearly no lactate. Okay. So, so this is why, you know, vegetables uh, or sauerkraut, this kind of fermented juices, they have a lot of lactate. And what I want is the lactate. This is a, a, a very important. Okay, good stuff. And, and we've ran on. Anything else you would finally like to, to leave us with, uh, Lothar, while we wrap up? To, to what? Sorry, I, I, mean, I missed this. Is there anything thing. else you would like to share with us before we finish? Yeah, maybe, maybe one thing. Um, like with cancer patients, don't give up. <laughs> with, with the whole co corona situation okay um there will come better times there will come um uh, new things and uh, a lot of people they are right now they are frustrated because maybe they're losing their job they don't have the money uh, they become more aggressive because of wearing a mask is so terrible and so on and so on and um but you know sometimes a lot of people they think that new things are not so good than the old things, you know. For example, if I lose my job, everybody is thinking this is so bad. Yeah. But when you ask people five years later, yeah, yeah. I would say, I don't know, but 50 or, or maybe more percent of all the people would say, hey, yeah. this was a good thing that this happened to me. Yeah. And I think this is now also in, 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 in the corona crisis. Um, of course, so many bad things happens at the time, but um, I'm sure in a few years, um, we, we will look back and we would say, hey, it was a very hard time to go through, but it was a good thing that all these things happened because otherwise we would not be there where we are today. So I'm, I'm totally, I'm totally 100% um, sure that in a few years, we will be happy that all these things happened now. Yeah, fantastic, bro. That's just as we'd expect from you, Lothar, that positive final push. Thank you very, very much. Um, I know every, I'm, everyone's everyone's going to love this. And uh, inevitably, I suspect in six months' time, we'll ask you on again if, if we're still here at doing yeah. this. But so far, uh, people keep coming along who want to participate. So so thanks again, Lothar, your star. Uh, Enjoy, enjoy the wonderful winter you're going to have in Mallorca. Well, we, well, we buckle down. Um, <laughs> we will have. We will have yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Thanks again, and have a great day. Cheers. Cheers, Luther. Thank you.